No, I'm really serious. That picture was taken not long after I was here at at St. Charles. Um, those of you who do remember me, I was um, a final year seminarian here. Um, it was 2005, 2006, and uh, I was ordained a deacon while I was here, and I was ordained a priest while I was here. And for two or three weekends after I'd been ordained a priest, my parish remained at St. Charles, and I said masses here on those weekends. And Whew, I remember, I, you know, I had a cheat sheet here <laughs> to, to make sure that I hit all the parts of the Mass because I was just so afraid of making mistakes. And then I went to the Catholic community of Pleasanton and grew up. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's great to be back at St. Charles. I have a great affection for this parish. A great affection for this parish. I've had it um, since... I was here that wonderful, incredible, I think of it as my diaconate year, although it was also the year, as I say, that I became a priest. And um, I have to say this too, you know, I, I did three years, let me, hold on a second, guys, okay, I don't want to keep you here till 10 o'clock and then, yeah. I, I try to be respectful of, of everybody's time at 7.41, so we want to be done when, boy, about 8, 8, 10? 8, 10. Yeah, okay. 8, yeah. 8, 20, 8, 20. Um, yeah, okay. I want to get... <laughs> hey, if we're here till 9, you blame Michael Rissong, okay? Because he and I were dead there at the bar, okay? I was hanging out at the bar with Michael. I, I didn't eat... My gosh, what an amazing dinner. I didn't eat because I'm fasting. Yeah, I seriously... I didn't eat because, because I'm on my first real... Fast. I mean, my first real fast since before COVID. I said, I said, boyfriend, you're done with making excuses about why you can't fast. When COVID hit, I just quit fasting. I don't know why, but I did. I mean, of course, I'm Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, whatever. Yeah, I fast, but but no, I'm on a fast, and I, it was hard tonight. That what a wonderful dinner. What a what a wonderful organization. What I wanted to say was, you guys remind me of Brentwood, and I couldn't give you a higher compliment because when I went to Brentwood as an associate in 2012, the engagement of the men in that parish just it was like this. It was like this. I said, dang. I mean, there's just something to be said for male discipleship. There really is. You know, I, I, I've spoken to the, the Wings group here numerous times. I know they're awesome. And so is the Wings group in Pleasanton and the Wings group in Dublin. And our Wings group's over in Castro Valley and Hayward. I'm at, uh, I'm at St. Clement in Hayward. I, I, you know, yeah, the women show up. The men don't always show up. Look at this room. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. All right, I actually do have a talk that I want to give. Let's start, though, with a prayer. I know we've been praying already, but I like to put everything under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We ask you, Lord, to send your Spirit upon us as we consider the hero's journey uh, in today's talk. In particular, Lord, step eight, where we stop and sort of take stock and see what we've gained and uh, how we have changed and how it has benefited us and uh, changed us. Uh, for the benefit of others. We ask you, Lord, to send your spirit upon me, and um, if any of the men have comments or concerns or questions during the course of the talk, we ask you to embolden them to shoot their hands up and say, Father, can I ask a question? Because that's the spirit. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, by the power of your spirit, Lord, through the intercession of our patron, St. Charles Borromeo, through the intercession of uh, my patron in my own parish, St. Clement, and also, of course, Blessed Mother Mary. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, so I met with Roy and Jim and uh, on um, Friday. Friday. I've only had two glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if this goes south, guys, you just play, you play Mike Rison. <laughs> he and I, have already, we've already got a date. You guys know the, the, the place called Posada? Do you know that restaurant? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I discovered it for the first time 10 days ago. I thought I knew all the great restaurants in the East Bay. No, Posada is amazing. Well, here's the thing. I hope this is okay. Jim and Roy, I hope this is okay. I know I'm supposed to be focused on, on part eight, and don't worry, we're gonna get there. I'm gonna talk about it. Um, let me find it here. There we go. The takeaway. Whether you are coming off a personal or professional challenge, passing from one of life's stages or another, or coming to the end of your earthly life, have you taken time out to take an inventory of your graces? Are you different? And I thought, oh my gosh, 
this was arranged by the Spirit. I, what, what a perfect thing for me to reflect on um, as I enter into my ninth year at Bishop O'Dowd High School after nine years in the parishes. So at this point, I'm half my priesthood for Oakland now is with the teenagers. And that's a okay. I don't know how, but they think I'm cool. <laughs> I'm like so not cool, guys. I'm really not. But the teenagers think I'm cool. Whatever. Um, here's the thing. I hope it's okay. When I was looking at this wonderful, this is so, such a well thought out program. When I was looking at this, reading the hero's journey, I said, oh my. Gosh, this, is, this totally applies. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go through the steps uh, for the first few minutes, and then I'm going to get to the part where we, uh, we look at, um, again, uh, uh, count those blessings. Have you taken time out to take an inventory of your graces? Yes, I have, and I've got seven of them I want to mention uh, in the second, say, two-thirds of the talk. Am I different? Oh, boy, am I different. I I'm at a place I never, I'm in my 60s, I never thought. Never guessed this is where I'd be when I was in my 20s or my 30s. And what an amazing place to be and how grateful I am to you know who for the fact that I'm here. So here's what I want to say. The hero's journey. The call to adventure. The hero is called to a journey or adventure that is outside of their ordinary world. So guess what that was for me? <laughs> Youth ministry. I, youth ministry! I don't know how many of you guys know this. I'm a writer, okay? I wrote novels in my 20s and 30s. I had agents in New York. I had, you know, the Bay Area is a pretty cosmopolitan place. I had fancy friends who were models and photographers and writers themselves, and we'd get together at places like Skates on the Bay in Berkeley. We'd have a couple of drinks, and we'd do the appetizer thing, and then we'd have dinner. And nobody in that crowd would ever have thought me and a church youth group. I mean, that's just not, I, I can't tell you. No, <laughs> no. And okay, it did happen. And here's how it happened is that, well, I came back to the, I wasn't practicing my faith in my 20s. Most of you know that because you guys know me from my time here at, at St. Charles, even though it was so long ago now. But um, I, I was away from the faith in my 20s because I was this, you know, hard style and, you know, young writer who was going to make it in New York and uh, having drinks with my fancy friends at places like Skates on the Bay in Berkeley. And um, uh, I crashed. I mean, I was not, I was not, I was living a very selfish and self, uh, you know, uh, in, totally focused on the self kind of life. Very, I wasn't actually materialistic. Writers are not materialistic. We, we do, what we really value is freedom. What a writer wants is freedom, and and I, uh, uh, I crashed toward the end of my twenties, and I broke up with my agent in New York, my first agent. I worked with four over the years. I broke up with the only girlfriend I'd ever been with that I thought about. Gee, this could be it. We could get married. Um, I hated my little job at Berkeley at that point because. I thought I deserved better. I've been writing for five years. I've worked with this agent in New York, et cetera, et cetera. And I, uh, I crashed. And I've written about this. I, I am a writer. I do have books in print now. I've written about it in a book that's going to be out this fall. Called, I'm not here to promote my books, but I'm just saying. It's a book called Life Before God. And I thought that's what my life was in my 20s. It was life before God. And then I had this big conversion experience. I mean, I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. He reached down and he picked me up from those, those windswept cliffs and he brought me to safety. I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, just the way those guys with the Rolex watches on the evangelical channels <laughs> know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. All right. Seven years later. I have this. I have this amazing seven-day retreat at Christ the King Retreat Center. I'm from the Sacramento Valley. It's over in Sacramento. I was living here in the East Bay forever because I came to Berkeley as an 18-year-old. As an but I still did a lot of my faith life over there in Sacramento. And I had this um, this um, seven-day retreat where the young priest. Any of you guys watch um, uh, ETN, EWTN? 
yeah. eternal yeah. witness. Yeah, Father Cedric Pesenia, you might know who I'm talking about. He had a program with them for years called Live Passionately. This was before Cedric was famous. He was my age, and he popped the question, have you ever thought about becoming a priest? And I've been thinking about it for a while. And I said, yes. And the first thing that happened when I got home from that retreat was what? An invitation to ministry. This is the way God works. It's also the way the heroes. I mean, I read this thing. I said, the hero's journey. I'm not calling myself a hero by any means, but the hero's journey. Oh, my gosh. This is what. Uh, pick it up, Father. We're at 750 already. Um, so, so, and we're still on number one. So here's the thing. I, I get home. What's the first thing that happens is, is Sister Evelyn, who runs Faith Formation, my home parish in Marysville, says, I, I've got a question for you. Can you give me one hour a week? Did you guys have figured this yourself already? When a priest or a nun asks you for one hour a week, run in the other direction as fast as you can. Okay. Well, <laughs> she wanted me to help with the confirmation class. So what is it? It's a call to what? You ministry. And I've been studying the faith like crazy since I came back. I was hungry for the faith. C.S. Lewis and G.K. Chesterton and Dorothy Sayers and Peter Green. I was hungry for the faith. And I thought, wow. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll help. Uh, there was no resistance. See, part of the, the refusal of the call, that's the second part of the uh, of the hero's journey. That came later. Three years later, a big hit. Now listen, I was in okay, I was in my 30s. I get that the kids thought I was a white Tupac in my 30s. You know why? <laughs> because I was a white Tupac, okay? I get that the kids responded to me then. So they uh, that's all the Holy Spirit. But in any event, um, the confirmation classes, I, by the, three years later, I taught like 90 kids for confirmation, and they, uh, they were in the youth group. The youth group leader was leading, and they were saying, we want Jim Sullivan. I was not father at that time, obviously. We want Jim Sullivan. And this is where, where step number two, the refusal to the call happens. Uh, ministry? No, 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 no. I can, okay, it was not one hour a week for Sister Evelyn, because I was teaching the class in no time and in charge of the program in no time. It was six or seven hours, it was no big deal. I was a young writer trying to get published in New York. I was working my job in Berkeley. I was living with my sister and brother-in-law and my three nieces in, in Oakland trying to help, you know, with the family expenses and raise my nieces. And I was driving back and forth to Marisol already twice a week for the confirmation demands. And I said, Marisol's two hours from here. And I said, I said, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. No, no, no. But you know what? I had started studying for priesthood at the Graduate Theological Union that year. I had to cut 10 hours out of my schedule at my job at Berkeley because of that. I needed those 10 hours back. And this is what I said, I need 10 hours and 10 hours somewhere, you know, I need, I need um, 10 hours, uh, evenings, weekends, I don't care, I, pizza delivery, uh, you know, telephone sales, I don't care what it is, I'll take it. It's gotta be 10 hours, about $400 a month. This is 1995, guys. 400 was a lot more then than it is today. What do you suppose, the pastor of Marisville tells me, Jim, the kids are asking for you because the, root, the, the youth leader is leaving. Um, they love you. They know you from confirmation. It's I can't offer you much, Jim, but it's 10 hours a week, flexible in the evenings, on the weekends, $400 a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The hero refuses the call, and then the hero finds there's no way to refuse it. So supernatural aid. What I've got a note to myself here is because I love Psalm 119. My dear brothers, do you know Psalm 119? Oh my gosh. Every human emotion, you know, it's, it's 176 verses. Here's verse 105. The Lord's, uh, the, the Lord's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What does that mean? The lamp to the feet, you can see the next step. The next step was youth ministry in Mary's room because it perfectly fits what you need, boyfriend. 10 hours a week, very flexible, 400 a month. You're being called to this, okay? And, and then a light to my path. And I didn't know, I didn't understand at the time. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, I just didn't know. I thought, I'll do this for a few years. Yeah, it's okay, I'll do it. I, I, the kids in Marysville are great. I'll make this happen. And I did. Um, I crossed, the, the, next, the next step is crossing the threshold, and I don't see a note to myself there, so we can move right on. Um, trials and tribulations, where do I start? But yeah, the first year, first year as a youth minister. See, the, 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 uh, the, this is one, two, three, four, five. This is fifth on the hero's journey. Trials and tribulations. You go into the new space, okay? You overcome your resistance, you go into the new space, and you hit, you hit obstacles. And I did. I hit a lot that first year, but you know what? The Lord was with me. 
I, I started spending time in front of the Eucharist on a regular basis. Right? I mean, on my knees in front of the Eucharist, St. Joseph's and Mary's Wilson Church that was open during the day. I could go there. I was down here most of the time. I was working my job in Berkeley, all the rest of it. But I was in Mary's well now two or three times a week with the youth ministry and with confirmation. And I'd go to the church. I'd, I'd open that door. I'd walk inside. I'd fall down on my face in front of the Eucharist and just say, this isn't me, Lord. I can't do this. <laughs> You better show up. I'll show up. You better show up. All right. To approach to the inmost cave. This is this is number six. A hero comes to the edge of a dangerous place or situation and prepares to face their greatest challenge. Well, here's what happened. I in two, in 1998 I went away to seminary uh, for the diocese of Sacramento. And I'm an Oakland priest, so what happened? I know some stuff happened here along the hero's journey, so to speak. Along the priest journey. I don't like calling myself a hero but along the priest journey. Um, some stuff happened here. This is one of the things that happened. Um, I had been at the seminary from 1998 to 2001. I'd done really well in my classes. I just finished at St. Charles Borromeo Sacramento, of all places, a parish founded by my uncle, Monsignor Poole in Sacramento, who had died three years before. As long as Uncle Jim was there, I was safe with Sacramento. Once Uncle Jim died, <laughs> if there was anybody there who didn't like me and there were some people there, I won't get into that because I politics. There were some. There was a priest there in particular, and unfortunately, he was in charge of the vocations program, who didn't like me. I took a year out after that year at my uncle's because I wanted to finish my master's degree at the Dominican School in Berkeley. Remember, I said I'd started studying at the GTU. I so fell in love with philosophy that I wanted a degree in it, and I mean a master's degree in it. And so I needed to finish my thesis. I also had this desire, and it was over. Well, those of you who read my book, Seven Summers from the Shore, you know what I'm talking about. This overwhelming desire to get my young people from Marysville back to Europe. I'd taken them there in 1998 as the last thing I was going to do for the Marysville Youth Group before I went to seminary. We went to Italy and to Medjugorje. Well, I wanted to get them back. And I wanted to do it in 2000, the great Jubilee year. I was at the seminary, I was working on my thesis, I was studying my German to make sure that I could get, get the thesis because you had to have a foreign language. I, I was not able to get the kids back. And then I went on the, the pastoral year at my uncle's parish. My uncle, as I say, had gone at that point, had died, but a good friend of his was in charge of the parish, I had a fabulous year in Sacramento, at St. Charles Borromeo, of all places. And this is what happened. I got to the end of the year and discerned you are supposed to get the kids from there. Remember, this is all about youth ministry, right? I'm the chaplain of Bishop O'Dowd. This is about youth ministry. I said, you are supposed to get those kids back to Europe. So they know, because my kids were Mexican-American kids from the south side of the river, which is to say the wrong side of the tracks, and they would never have believed that they could get to Europe, but they did with me in 1998. And I love those kids. I love them today. I baptize their babies today. I bury their grandparents today. I'm, you know, they are, they are like 40 extra nieces and nephews to me, those Marysville youth kids. So I said, no, I'm taking a year out. And what I told everybody, I've got to finish my thesis. Everybody, everybody could look at that and say, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good reason to take the year out. The real reason at all. The real reason was to get my kids back to Europe, just do fundraisers there in the parish in Marysville and make it happen. Um, instead of which, 9-11 happened and travel went into a tailspin for the next couple of years. We did not get back to Europe. Um, it was a real crisis. Uh, I had run out of money at that point and seminarians get paid, they get paid very little. Um, I was a seminarian in his 40s and wasn't willing to go back, unable to buy shampoo or gas. So I said, I think I'm gonna to have to get a job. A job came in the Marysville Parish, not my asking for it. This again is, is Psalm uh, 119. There are actually other verses, but I don't wanna look them up. You'll notice I bought my Bible because I was gonna read and read and read from Psalm 119 to you tonight, but you can read it on your own. It's only 176 verses, it takes about 10 minutes. <laughs> There's a great song, but I was gonna read again. You know, the verse that really applies is your, your word, Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, a lamp to my feet. Here comes the job I need. Where? In Marysville, at my parish, from the pastor, who's a sacramental priest, blah, blah, blah. And so I tell Sacramento, I'm taking a second year out. Now, this is, this is the dark cave thing. I tell Sacramento, I'm taking a second year out. Oh, boy, they were not happy. I was in my 40s. Yeah, I, I can, in a way, I kind of understand. It's like, dude, would you like 
Are you serious? Come on, you're in your mid-40s. When are you going to become a priest? When you're 60? I, you know, and so, so I, I, in a way, I kind of understand them. And in a way, it's kind of like, eh. Uh, what's that Italian gesture? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> was that right? <laughs> Pretty close. All right. So um, the ordeal, the ordeal comes in that, you know, I had this great, great plan. I'm not going to go into all the details because we are almost, we are at 8 o'clock. So I had this great plan. I promise you, I'm going to get to the seven graces in a minute. Five minutes. Um, <laughs> but we had this, I had this great plan. And uh, for, for that year, where I was going to, Make the money I need to get the kids back to Europe. Make the money I need to return to seminary for just two years. I had just two more years to go in a seven-year program. I mean, I was right there. And, um, uh, and I knew Sacramento was not going to approve of what I did or what I had to do. But I thought, I'm working. Come on, I'm working a parish job for, for a diocesan priest. Uh, and he's going to give me a rate review at the end of the year. And it's all going to be good. And uh, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. Sacramento said, um, sayonara. <laughs> sayonara, Sullivan. And I didn't worry about it. I had a job <laughs> in the Marysville Parish, and um, I, had, I had friends in Oakland, because I'd lived in Oakland for years. I came to Berkeley as a freshman at 18. So now we're at reward. Um, the hero emerges from the ordeal, transformed, and gains a reward or treasure. What happened was I did finally, in 2003, get my Marysville youth group back to, uh, not just Medjugorje, we did the whole Dalmatian coast. Anybody ever been to Croatia? Is it gorgeous or what, guys? Oh my gosh. We did 10 days, well, seven days in Medjugorje, 10 days down the, uh, the uh, uh, Dalmatian coast. It was, it was amazing. And, um, and when I came back, I was, I was a, uh, um, it says this is whatever number this is, eight or nine. The hero must return to their ordinary world, but the journey is not over yet. I came back and it was for Oakland. And this, so this is what happened. I came back from that trip. I let Sacramento I was, know I was back. I'm ready to return to seminary. They said, no, you're not. We don't want to anymore. And uh, I said, okay, all right. There's the Italian gesture. And I called the friends in Oakland and they said, are you, are you serious? I said, no, I'm serious. And they said, okay, all right. Um, Bishop Vignon is brand new. He's in Mexico right now learning his Spanish. When he gets back, he's gonna to want to interview you. I have never had such an interview in my life as I had this is the resurrection box there on the hero's journey. Never had such an interview in my life as I had with that man. Now he's the Archbishop of Detroit to this day. I sent him a Christmas card a few years ago telling him I was a Bishop of Dallas, and he was so happy with that. Bishop Vigneron, I, I mean, I'm a seminarian who's been rejected by his diocese. There'd be reason to kind of go, eh, okay, what's with you? It wasn't him at all. As we were walking toward his office, he said, uh, you know, Jim, I just want to let you know I think I know a case of politics when I see one. Whoa. Open the door totally. Open the door totally. This is the resurrection moment. We just shared, we just shared our faith. Archbishop Vigneron is one of the best men I've ever met in my life. Oh, we need more bishops like him and archbishops like him and cardinals. <coughs> such a humble man, such a loving man, such a gentle man and a man of deep, deep faith. I said, Jim, you know, if you've suffered a little of this, you can offer that up for the salvation of souls. There are souls in purgatory who need you to pay their debt. I thought, oh man, this man is speaking right to me. He's speaking right to me. He didn't tell me that day that I was accepted. He had Father Donjou. Do you guys know Father Lawrence? Father Lawrence Donjou, yeah. He was then the vocation director. Father Lawrence, who I knew from seminary, called me the next morning and said, you're in. And so that was, that was the resurrection. So now we're finally at this place where I can talk to you about, okay, how are we doing there, Father? 803, okay, very good, Father. Here's the thing. It said, it said, can you give an inventory of graces, taking them as they came? Okay, and we're talking here about youth ministry because youth ministry redefined and redirect, well, redirected my, my path through priesthood, right? Because I insisted on taking a year out to be with my kids from Marys and getting them back to Europe. I insisted on it. It was a passion. I wrote a book about it. That's how passionate I was about it. And it redirected uh, the, 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 uh, the pace and the focus of my priesthood. I left Sacramento, came to Oakland, and it has defined, it has defined me in Oakland. I came to Oakland. I did a pastoral year at St. Philip Neary and Alameda. The first thing that I found myself volunteering for was youth ministry. And I worked, I went back to the parish and I stayed with the Alameda Youth Group for three years because I was just across the bay. It was easy to get back uh, to the Alameda kids and to be with them on Sundays and that kind of thing. Um, 
here are seven graces that came from the Lord showing me the lamp and the light. The lamp for the, the next step. Okay, Sacramento just told you no. The lamp says, try Oakland. Oakland accepts me. The path is suddenly lit up by the light. That's Psalm 119, 105. I love Psalm 119, 105. I, I love Psalm 119, period. Seven graces. It said, can you take an inventory of graces? Here they are. Youth ministry made me a teacher. How did I start in it? I started as a confirmation teacher. And I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I'd been reading, you know, the great writers of the Catholic faith. I mean, not people like Aquinas and Augustine, but, you know, the modern writers, uh, the modern apologists for years. And suddenly I was able to share that with 30 bright young minds. We, we, I, uh, we ordained, excuse me, confirmed a 14-year-old in the Sacramento Valley, so they were younger than, we, than our, our, our group here. But um, I became a teacher, which of course made me a student. If you're gonna teach, you've gotta study, you've gotta know. And I went deeper and deeper into my study of the faith in order to be the best teacher I could be. I was a confirmation teacher there for six years. I, I went deeper and deeper with it in order to, uh, to, uh, um, uh, to teach my students. My teaching the confirmation class led out to teaching youth ministry, teaching RCIA in the parishes, to parish adult formation programs, faith formation programs, to diocesan-wide faith formation, to retreats, to parish missions across the country. I've given parish missions in the Carolinas, in Alabama, in Indiana, in Nebraska, in, um, where's Ann Arbor? Michigan. Uh, I've given, and, and in the Pacific Northwest, as well as here in California, I've given parish missions across the country. Not lately, because at, at the high school, you can't take five or six days out at Lent and just say, I'm taking off to give a parish mission in St. Louis. In a parish, you can do that if you can arrange it with your pastor, but high school, no. But yeah, parish missions, which I love. Uh, electronic media, Radio Maria, and Shalom World Television. Do you know Shalom World? I love Shalom World. I do, they're Indian. I do so much work for them. And oh my gosh, you know they get it on. They get it on. They get it uploaded or whatever. And I come back months later and I see Father Jim talking the the Psalms in Lent, and it's eight episodes. And the episode with the most number of views has two hundred forty videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. You know what is it? I got dandruff. I, I love Shalom World. I wish Shalom World would market more, which has led me to what I'm going to say next. Um, some friends and my brother and I founded our own uh, media apostolate, which will launch next month, God willing. It's called San Gabriel Media. It's YouTube, it's television, and it's publishing, and it will be in the air. The Feast of San Gabriel, also Michael and Raphael, September 29th. Now all of this has come, all of this has come because of the gift that was given to me at uh, uh, the request that I become the teacher for the confirmation class in marriage when 1992. Finally, Bishop O'Dowd High School. You talk about a teaching, I mean, premier teaching assignment. I'm now entering into number nine, year number nine of Bishop O'Dowd. I was eight years with the Marysville Youth Group. That's the longest I stayed anywhere with youth ministry, except now Bishop O'Dowd, which seems appropriate. It's 1,250 students after all. That's, that's where I'm spending the longest amount of time. And as I say, it's half my priesthood now <laughs> in the jungle <laughs> with the teenagers. All right, the teachings, grace number two. Have I counted graces? Yes, I have. Grace number two. The teachings gave rise to books. This is amazing. With my kids in Marysville, when they were teenagers in early 20-somethings, we would get together after we'd been to Medjugorje in 1998. We would get together and we would um, have a big meeting where we'd have pizza and we'd have plans and you know we wanted to go back to Europe. We had fundraising and that kind of thing. And I come up from the seminary to Marysville to have these meetings with the kids at my mom's house. My mom went straight to heaven, I assure you. Um, the kids wanted to pray the rosary, and I was thinking, let's pray. You know, yeah, it'd be good to pray. I didn't think I could ask teenagers. They'd been to Medjugorje. They prayed full rosaries, all the rest of it. But I thought, now we're back in Marysville now, they're back to their normal lives, and at the end of high school and into you know, junior college, and I, I can't ask them to pray a rosary. I said, let's say a decade of the rosary. And I got, we got to the end of the decade, and one of my boys, Nelson, who's now a police detective up there, goes, why don't we just finish it, Jim? <laughs> let's finish it! And we did. 
And, and so um, what happened is I would tell the, the kids a little about the rosary mystery. Because I don't want just the, hey, Mary, I'm the I'd like, okay, the visitation. So Mary's pregnant, and it's a miracle. And Elizabeth's pregnant, and it's probably a miracle. What do you think the Lord is doing here with Mary? He's creating community between two women who've got these really, you know, unexpected pregnancies. And when Mary gets back to Joseph, we all know what's going to happen. And, you know, I would talk about the mystery before, before we prayed it, so my kids could understand it. Those reflections on the rosary, they're three books now. They're three books now. The Rosary and the Gospels, the Rosary and the Psalms, the Rosary and the Prophets, okay? I did eventually become a published author. Yeah, it took a long, 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 long. I became a priest first, but I did eventually become a published author. And I've got Psalm 119, verse 27 here. I'm not going to read it because I'm running right up on the edge of my time. And I'm only on, uh, I'm only on number two in terms of the graces. But number three, uh, number three, uh, travel. Pilgrimage, youth pilgrimage, started in 1998 with what seemed impossible that I would take 17 teenagers from the Marysville Youth Group to Medjugorje and Italy on a, on a parish pilgrimage. We had about 45 people in parish, uh, from the parish altogether, but 17 of them teenagers. Um, and that set in motion a, a pilgrimage ministry that I did throughout the rest of my career at the seminary. Every summer I was leading pilgrimages, except for the summer of uh, 2000, well, 2002, actually, no, it's not true. I had two pilgrimages did happen that year, but we planned on about six in 2002, two happened. But after that, you know, every year. And um, the first year pilgrimage, as I say, was in 1998, five years later, because I had absolutely determined I was gonna get my kids back to Europe. If it was the last thing I did, as I say, I wrote a book about it, I was so passionate about it. We got back to Europe in 2003. Um, I had been back to Medjugorje for Youth Festival many times since. Uh, with teens and 20-somethings. I've been to two World Youth Days. I've been to the National Catholic Youth Convention in both Indianapolis and Atlanta. I've done a dozen mission trips to Latin America with teens to Mexico, Venezuela, and Peru. In one of my Venezuelan trips, I discovered and developed what I call my Venezuelan youth group. Now, they're a young adult group, really. But it's a bunch of young people in Venezuela that I made a strong connection with in 2006, and we are connected to this day. I'm fasting today. Oh my gosh, what a great dinner. It was hard. It was hard to say no to that dinner. I'm fasting! I'm fasting! For what? I'm fasting for Venezuela. If you know anything about the situation in Venezuela, that's why I'm fasting. I want Venezuela freed. And I don't know what else we can do besides praying, saying mass, fasting. I wish the bishops of Venezuela, this is off topic, Father, I wish the bishops of Venezuela would create a rosary crusade for the country to free them from what? Marxist error. Our Lady said at Fatima, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world. Venezuela has collapsed. It was one of the 15 strongest economies in the world 20 years ago. It's the basket case of the Western Hemisphere. If you live in Venezuela, you have no opportunity unless you are connected to that corrupt, quote, end of quote, socialist. They're not socialists. They don't care about their people at all. I'll stop. I'm fasting for Venezuela. I met a Venezuelan youth group. That's my fourth, uh, my fourth uh, uh, grace, that I have young friends in Venezuela who are in touch with me on a regular basis as a result of my going to Venezuela with my young people. Ministry of Presence to Young People in Casablanca, Morocco. This is amazing. I can't talk about it because I'm out of time, but um, this, is, this is grace number five. There's a bunch of young Muslims who have the Quran on this. Don't you wish our kids had the Bible on this? I teach teenagers right at Bishop O'Dell. It's like my young people in Casablanca, they, they're, they're waiters, they're bartenders, the people I've met in the service industry. They come up and when they found out I was a priest, oh my gosh. I thought, I thought, yeah, I might get beheaded. Are you kidding? No, they said, they said, we knew you were a holy person. We knew you were a holy person. I thought, oh my God. Well, you know what? The Casablancans know priests because the French were there forever. So, you know, there used to be a lot of Catholics in Morocco. In any event, the, uh, my young Moroccans, they bring this up and they say, look, this is about Angel Gabriel. This is about John the Baptist. You know, Blessed Mother Mary, she had Jesus as a virgin. You know that, don't you? And you do know at the end of time, Jesus is going to come back and save the Muslims from the Antichrist. I didn't know that. I know it now. 
I've got something going on in Casablanca. I'll let you know later. <laughs> it's, it's still new. It only started just before COVID hit. I was there four times enough to really make a connection and I'm going back this fall. But we've been in touch, you know, uh, thanks to the miracles of modern electronics. It's amazing. This is missionary work in Morocco with the young, okay? Again, it gets back to the young. The, the adventure here is the young. My very career as a writer, I mean my first published book, is what Seven Summers from the Shore, the book that was about getting the Marysville kids back to Europe. It's a great book. It's, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just saying it makes people laugh, it makes people cry, and it's a real adventure story. And uh, uh, so that's my sixth grace. My seventh grace is what? Relationship with the young. Relation. I'm in my 60s. I don't have any kids of my own. I don't have any grandkids. That's okay. You know, my sister has to call the grandchildren grandchildren. I get to call them nephews and nieces. Oh yeah, my four-year-old nephew. Makes me sound young, right? Anyway, yeah, that was a joke, guys. I'm glad you got it. Okay, relationship with the young. My Marysville teens are now 40. They've got kids. I'm baptizing their babies, like I said. I've done all their weddings. I think everybody's married now. Um, none of their parents are dying yet. They're my age, but grandparents have died, all that kind of thing. The Alameda teens, I went to St. Philip Mary when I came over to Oakland made, uh, you know, three years with the Alameda teens. They're now in their 30s. The, the Pleasanton and Fremont teens, my first two assignments as a priest. Pleasanton, I went, went there right after here at St. Uh, St. Charles. I went to Pleasanton for two years. Some of you remember Dan Danielson, right? Yeah. What an awesome guy to start under. Awesome. And then I went to Fremont, Our Lady Guadalupe. And I did, I did youth ministry in both places. We went to Medjugorje. Uh, the, the Fremont kids and I also went to Venezuela. Um, Brentwood, which came um, in 2012. Now these kids are now in their 20s. Some of them are working with me. Some of my Brentwood former teens are in their 20s now. And they are talented kids with, when it comes to things like editing videos, shooting videos, uh, you know, figuring out YouTube and that. They're working with us at San Gabriel Media which is you know, the, the, the media project that I, my brother, some friends and I decided because Shalom World just wasn't getting the word out. We spent a lot of time on you know, eight, eight episodes of the Psalms in Lent and the, the one that was seen the most, I think, was 246 views. It's like, no, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna mark it. <laughs> we're gonna mark, I'm not gonna go to all that trouble for nothing. I can get more people at a, at, at a parish gathering. So, so yeah, San Gabriel Media will be out in, the, in late September. I have young people from Brentwood working on that. And finally, I've got uh, young people from Hayward. We went, to, uh, we went to World Youth Day in Panama together. And guess what? My biggest assignment, the biggest youth assignment of my life, back today for the first day of classes, all of us complaining about it, it's August 14th after all, <laughs> Bishop O'Dowd High School, which I just got, I'm gonna finish it, I promise. I thought, Okay, you gotta understand. Remember, I started youth ministry in 1995. 2015, 20 years in youth ministry, including many as a priest. I'm at the bishop's Christmas party. We're, st we're st uh, st uh, well, we're all in the house. And he says, Jim, can I talk to you for a minute? And I knew he was gonna do this. I've been warned by my pastor. He's gonna tell you the next assignment. I said, okay. So I'm, I'm expecting a parish. I'm expecting to be a pastor someplace. I thought maybe I'll get St. Charles. And I, I, go out onto the, onto the balcony with the bishop and we're looking out over Lake Merritt and you know our cathedral actually looks pretty good at night when it's all lit up. It looks really pretty. You can see why it's called Christ the Light. We're out there and I've got my drink and he's got his and he says, Jim Bishop will die high school and I'm really glad I had a strong grip on that drink. <laughs> or it would have fallen three floors to the, to the pavement below, right? I was shocked. Again, again, the resistance, the resistance. I thought, no, I'm supposed to be a pastor. Come on, I'm in my 50s. I'm supposed to be a pastor. But I didn't say that. I couldn't hide my shock, though. The bishop was like, because he'd been told by my pastor, Jim will love it, he'll jump at it. No, my pastor was wrong. Um, the bishop, it was Father Jerry Brown, just in case you want to know. Um, the bishop was like, Jim, you don't have to say, I, I, I would never make you take, Bishop, I didn't say no. <laughs> didn't say anything. <laughs> can I, can I, I, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now, you mentioned the magic word. You took an arrow, you took that arrow Cupid out and you flung it and it landed, it's right here. I'm going to Bishop O'Dowd High School. Good Lord, Bishop, I don't know nothing about teaching no sophomores, but I will go to Bishop O'Dowd High School. I told him I'll do it for three years and we'll see how it works. Okay, his face fell, but he said, I'm just so glad you're willing to go to gym. He wanted me there for at least five. This is number nine. 
I'm planning to stay four more. Keep me and the sophomores in prayer. Thank you so much for your time tonight. We are way over time. I really appreciate it. It's great to be back in St. Charles. God bless you all. I'm over time. <laughs> We're at 820. No, no problem. All right.